I'm building a village. Well, a, a bit of a village. Well, okay, more, more sort of a bit of a broken building with a fountain on the other side of the road. But hey, look, it's a diorama set from MiniArt. Find out more right here on Gary Stuff. Hi, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. Today, I have a look inside the box of the Mini Art Village Diorama set with Fountain in 1 35th scale. Now, have a look inside the box, have a look at the plastic, see what you get for your money, and then I'll show you how I built mine. Now, today's idea is that we get to the stage where the major assemblies are done and they're primed. The next video will be about painting and texturing and scene dressing. When you need know that uh, video is around, but the best thing to do is to subscribe to the channel, hit that bell and be notified when any of my new content is published. And of course, anything you see on my channel you like, please do give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. If you'd like to offer your support in a bit more of a concrete way, you can do that through Super Thanks by becoming a channel member or indeed through any of my online affiliate programs. So enough of all that, let's make a start and have a look at what you get for your money in the box of the Village Diorama with Fountain in 1 35th scale from Mini Art. <music> so the Village Diorama with Fountain from Mini Art. Um, you can see on the box there it says it's 257 millimeters long and 207 millimeters wide so that's what about 10 inches long and about 8 inches wide in old money 135th scale ideally um, it's a diorama base with the ruined house and railings and the fountain all included uh, none of the finishing flocks and textures and all that are included it's just the plastic in here okay um, on the side it's got some more I don't know if these are photographs or or drawings of what it should look like if if you do everything right kind of interesting that the inside of the house just looks like the outside of the house except it's got the floors there so I don't know what you know whether the inside would be a bit more messy i'm guessing it would be but then of course mini art do sell lots and lots and lots of little bits and pieces and bits of furniture and stuff like that so you can probably do those if you want let's have a look and see what you get inside the box it is a pretty basic set it's um it's been around a little while this kit so it's old old school ukraine so one piece of what a3 um, printed on and folded in half roughly it comes um, with very very basic instructions really oh there's no point looking at these in any more detail really um, you know it is what it is it, it, these are very 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 basic details uh, in, instructions rather but do you know what there's not a lot to this kit so it doesn't really matter I'm sure we'll manage Inside here are the plastic parts. I'll have a look at these in a minute, but essentially they consist of back form here and injection molded detail work there. Let's have a look at these in a bit more detail. So as you can see, most of the large parts are in back form. Um, it's reasonably thick plastic, so it should be easy enough to cut out and uh, sand the edges flush and then take them out okay should be all right to do this uh, that's obviously the interior of the house where the, where the floors are still kind of visible where the joist would have been um, this one is the fountain parts here more of the outside this is the outside walls the ones i showed you before the inside walls are the outside walls are the cracked plaster work and stuff like that which is all very nice uh, 
This is the base of the diorama, so you can see the sort of space we've got available. There's the outside wall, the house wall here, and then the cobblestone paving here, general sort of rubble here, the, um, the fountain goes in here somewhere. Well, that's, I would have thought there'd be a flat area for it, but there isn't. So anyway, the, the fountain will go there somewhere. Uh, there's an outside wall here, which is where the railings go. Um, and then these are the steps into the house here, and then the walls of the house there. And then some injected plastic, um, just door frames, window frames, shutters, the doors themselves, um, a wooden doorway, or gateway really, some ironwork as well. It's all you know, pretty nice. It's a, it's a bit flash, a bit flash here and there, but yeah, generally speaking, it's okay. It's not too bad. Uh, this is for a lamp stand here, so you can have a, a lamp, and you can also have a, a lamp hanging from the house if you want as well. The first thing we are going to have to do is start working on the um, vac form. Now, the thing with vac form is um, all the parts are designed, but they don't take account of the thickness of the actual plastic. So what you need to do is cut around these, but then sand it down. And I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. But first of all, Cut these out as you need them. Okay, so you can see on the edges in particular, you can see there's this little sort of notch of plastic. So what is a good idea is to get a fine pen and just trace, actually it's easier to do it when it's actually stood on here, is to trace into those edges of the piece then cut around and then where the black marker is that shows you where the edges the pieces just rub that down until you get to that level but I'll show you how to do that in a moment so we need to sand these down we need to keep them quite flat when we do it so what I do is I use a big sheet of sanding paper this is one I actually use for um, making my sanding stick so I sort of trim a bit off and stick it to a, a stick for a sanding stick but this you can rub away like that and until you get down to where the part actually belongs what you can do is use a bit of double-sided tape to keep this on your um, work surface as well so it doesn't move around and just keep going until you've got the plastic off. Keep your hand fairly flat, and then this keeps the part fairly flat, and then it will sand down relatively evenly, and do change positions now and again as well. Then you'll end up with pieces like this that go back to back. Just meet up nicely, and just tape them up, and uh, glue them, and then you can just clean off these final edges. It's a wall segment like that. Um, next, we're going to start making the um, surround of the fountain. Um, it's just that's that's what they do. <laughs> it's just the order they do these things in. I'm, I'm not sure why they do um, this wall and then the fountain. But maybe it's just because this wall and the fountain are bits on this um, vacuum form. Anyway, we're going to do the, the surround of the fountain now. You'll see this piece here and you'll think, okay, I can look for that. And then when you look, you've got all these big blobby bits. What you don't understand, you know, don't realize at first is that this here is superfluous. So the piece actually has to be cut off here as well as down there and there and there. So all of these, these bits here are just there as part of the molding process to support where the these sort of shapes and 
OGs or whatever they call them, um, come out from the edge because of course these need to be at a, like a 45 degree angle to mitre together to make a square trough. So these, as well as having to cut around there, you've got to cut the shapes here so there's a lot of sanding to do. Now along the top part here, I'll just show you on the thing before I cut it off. Um, the top part here, the plastic here, is quite a lot thinner than the plastic here. It's because um, it's been sort of stretched out, as it were, to, to fill the void here. So when you're cutting these out, cut around here. I would then cut around this extension as well, take the whole piece off, and then gently cut around there to get most of these backing off, most of the excess off. So it end up with something like that. And then very slowly work your way around, taking bits off. Don't take too, don't take too much off. Just don't go too crazy. Get close enough to it that you can then sand it into place with sanding sticks or very gently pare it down with a knife. But don't go too close to these with your knife first time because this it's very easy to slip and then you're, you're straight across one of these curves. And then you've got trouble. Each piece also has a backing that goes on as well. And then you can just glue those into place. And again, get them roughly right, but don't worry too much. We're going to sand these down later. And then when the whole thing's done, we're going to be doing some filling anyway. So just get them roughly right. There are three more faces to the fountain. Um, each of them has the backing like this. So it's becomes theoretically at least a wall of the base of the fountain and just um yeah put them together and then when they're set then we can try and assemble them all into a fountain um the same technique you use to make the sort of central rising column of the fountain so it comes in two halves and you just cut them out and shave them down with some sandpaper until they're roughly pretty close to being being right you can always take these edges off later on we can start assembling the fountain now it's the first thing we're going to put in the middle at the back here is the riser for the fountain it goes all the way to the back here In the middle. Okay. Then the walls can go on one by one. Don't worry about being too massively accurate because these um, these uh, vac form pieces aren't going to be totally accurate yet yeah. and um, we are going to have to do a little bit of filling here and there and don't worry if it goes out over the cobblestones that's fine too but just keep putting in the pieces as long as they're roughly in the right place they'll be fine next is this cap piece on top of the fountain like so just make sure it's centralized Then the spout, as it were, is this strangely shaped thing. Um, we'll take this this out first, and then it chop the ends off to get the U-shaped channel. So take it out of here first, though. Okay, so there it is, and we just put the spout onto the fountain, let's say. There we go. Now, so now all we have to do is let that set, do a little bit of filling around here and there, a little bit of tidying up, and we can then start spraying it later on. For the main part of the wall of the house, there are two mitered corners. What you need to do is just glue them together. Now, they don't stick straight away, so 
Use some clamps or maybe some tape to hold them in place while the glue sets. Now to get the sort of the depth of the piece as it were, a lot of these bits need to be joined together. Now joining together these faces is, is a nightmare. So what's a good idea with any kind of vac form is to some of the stuff we've cut off, like the, these bits, cut little tabs and put those around wherever you've got faces, around the windows, everywhere. Just to, and then that makes it easier to uh, glue everything together. I'll show you what I mean when I've done them. So I've put tabs on all the straight surfaces so when we put the parts together we can just line them up with bits and pieces and these, these are going to line up with other bits of the backing as it were later on. So um, I'll let that dry. So let these set up properly, just snip the end off that so it doesn't block the um, window opening there. And um, then we can put the other half of the wall on. So when you, you line them up over the tabs and then tape up the wall and then start gluing everything around. We're going to fill it, little gaps like that. We'll fill in later or we'll get fill in the sand. There's going to be a lot of filling and sanding on this. I'll tell you that right now. But um, other than that, yeah, it's beginning to look like a bit like a bit like a place, a bit like a wall. Let's get on with the rest of it. You can also put in these door frame parts now. Uh, you may need to trim them to size, uh, depending on how accurately you've got this uh, rectangle done. But just glue them into place like so. And we can also fit these window frames. Um, there are Sort of swinging opening windows that fit these but we'll put these in for the moment and then figure out how to do the windows because there's no clear parts that come with this so I don't know if I can find some clear um, acetate or maybe some old CD plastic or something like that but I'll put these in first and then worry about that and we can put door handles onto the doors as well so all the components are pretty much coming together now. There's this rubble pile that goes inside the ruin of the house. That's the house wall itself. It sits about there. There's some steps. There's a little outside wall as well. May or may not use this. I haven't decided yet. There's a little garden wall it goes in here uh, there's some railings as well go along here they won't stay up at the moment I don't think oh they do oh, call me a liar and there is the fountain that sits here in the corner um, so that's where we are at the moment there's going to be another bit of railing maybe there broken bit of railing I'm going to put the windows in the doors up in the windows actual sort of window elements in the windows. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to try and put some glass on them or not. Uh, there is also a door here that will sit there somewhere. I don't know, maybe, maybe like broken, I don't know, something like that. <clears throat> um, I told you these wouldn't stay up long. Uh, no, they're not going to again. Okay. We'll leave those in a minute. So, uh, that's pretty much it. Then the truck eventually will sit somewhere kind of like that, I guess, really. Yeah, kind of like that. Um, there'll be a, a seated figure. I might put him here. I might sort of uh, mock up a a pack or something for him to sit on backpack or something for him to sit on uh there'll be the boss here and there'll be a figure shouting at him 
Hey Lieutenant, which is the name of the piece. Okay, so the next steps are going to be to spray everything, let's prime everything, spray it up. Um, I'll do the building and the bases separately because I want to then, I can hide all the joints with sort of mud and flock and all the rest of it, but I want to be able to do the um, plaster work here def separately from the um, cobble work there, and the muck and grime and grass here. And I've got to figure out how I'm going to do some water for that. I think I might try and put some water in there and a little sort of bit of water. We'll see how we go with that. But that's where we are. Um, yeah. Come back for the next part. So there we go. There's um, a lot to be done. There's a lot of techniques. If you haven't done vac form before, it might look a bit daunting at times. But you know what? It's not that bad. And the bits, well, if you do make mistakes, you can fill them. That It's actually a very, very easy thing to do. I did use a lot of filler to get a lot of the walls um, flush and flat and things like that. And you're, you're filling it, you're sanding it, and you come back, you look again, and there's bits, and you're filling it and sanding it, and da-da-da-da-da-da. And you start to get a bit sort of depressed about it, a bit sort of down about it, until you put the primer on. And then suddenly all that work becomes worthwhile. And you think, yeah, that is ready. That is looking like a proper diorama set. I'm really happy with that. And I hope that's what happens for you too. Then, of course, you're going to paint it and texture it and dress it. Uh, ready for the kit to go in that's the subject of my next video how are you going to know when that video is published well the best thing to do is subscribe to the channel hit that bell and then you'll get a notification of any of my new content as it's published and of course anything you see that you like on my channel please give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts that's it for today thank you so much for watching hope to see you again very soon on the channel take good care now and goodbye <music>